Hi, my name is Cindy Rang with the Fabric Patch in Ephrata, Washington. You can find us at fabricpatch.net. And today we're going to show you our version of the crumb quilt. Alright, so my daughter and I have owned our quilt shop for 22 years and we have been making our version of the crumb quilt for 22 years. And the person who taught us how to do it was Thelma Wentworth. She was our very first employee and uh, I think that she told us that she learned it in a class in the early 90s down in Arizona and there was a lot of versions of it going around, but we have made tons of these and just in our little community along hundreds of thousands because they are were so popular now there's been a little bit of a resurgence and we really like the way that we do it the way that Thelma taught us to do it and so we want to show you that method so the pattern looks like this and I think it even says oh it does say by Cindy Rang so um, but I did give Thelma credit for it in here uh, Thelma taught us how to do everything but she didn't write a pattern uh, this is a very simple pattern it it just shows a couple of basic things it's pretty minimal and a lot of that is because you can kind of do your own thing which we're going to show you here in a few minutes on the back, we talk about how much fabric you would need, and for a quilt roughly this size, we do have some kits of this one available, you would need a panel, some sort of a panel that you want to be in the center of your crumb quilt, um, or uh, maybe it could be a focus fabric, whatever you'd like. And then roughly, you're going to need about three yards of fabric. So if you have a bunch of leftover bits and pieces that you want to use, that's fantastic. But if you're actually going to purchase fabric to make a crumb quilt, which is not such a weird thing, um, what we have in our kits is 12 fat quarters. You would also need some fabric for borders, and a lot of that would depend on what size you want. We do give you kind of a, a rough estimate of what you would need based on this size but it really is pretty easy for you to do your own thing and you'll see that as we go along uh, so this is the pattern we call it the crumb cake and this is what I'm going to show you how you do uh, how you do it so um, first thing that you're going to start with is your focus fabric so again if you look back here you can see that there's all kinds of strange pieces because every once in a while you get a panel that isn't just these perfect 10 inch squares or perfect six and a half inch squares and you sort of wonder what it is you're supposed to do with that this is another one that we happen to have at the moment we happen to have in the shop and it's a kelly ray roberts is that right kelly ray roberts panel which is super cute she has all of these really darling um, things on there and it's lots of different shapes so for your crumb cake quilt, the first thing you want to do is cut it up into squares and it doesn't matter. You do not have to measure. I don't care if it's a 10 inch square or a 10 and 1 8 by 9 and 3 quarters inch square. It absolutely doesn't matter. So first, I'm going to cut this up into bits. Okay, uh, I want to show you just a little bit of progress uh, in terms of cutting up this panel. So I just want to show you that uh, sometimes it's real obvious when you have a printed panel and you might think that you want to cut right on that line or maybe you think you want to cut a quarter of an inch from that line um, again in this in this particular quilt since it doesn't really matter what the size is what I would say is that you want to make sure that everything is lined up the way that you want it to so this block looks crooked but in order to make this straight this is kind of the way that this ended up here's another one that looks like that you can see that what I did was when I cut it I lined it up so that the words are nice and straight so then when I had this straight line it was easy then to get this straight line and this straight line so you can see there's a little bit of blue left over and so it almost looks as if it was crooked but in fact it's straight and the words are straight I'm going to show you what I mean by that here's another one I should press that one I'm going to show you with this one so with this one, what I want is to make sure that this hello gratitude is straight and I can see that might fuss for a minute. I can see the grid of my ruler through so that I can decide really where I want that and I can see that that 
the words, they really are kind of crooked. I think that's what I'm going to do anyway. You can decide for yourself because again in this particular quilt it doesn't make any difference how big your squares are. I'm going to go ahead and make my words straight. So you can see that it looks like I'm cutting this crooked. I'm going to cut that off. Now that I have this straight edge as my marker, I'm going to come over and I'm lining that up on one of the lines with my ruler. And I'm going to come over as far as I can. I really don't want to nip off too much of my butterfly wing. So I have a straight edge. I have my 90 degree angle. Doing the same thing. So I've lined up right on a line right here. And I'm really not tr cutting off very much there. That was hardly worth cutting. And then over here going to decide the same thing. And it might be nice to see, make sure that I have that quarter of an inch past my leaf. I'm right on the line here and I can see I'm right on the line there. So I'm going to cut that and then this is what I was talking about. You can see a little bit of the blue that's all going to be in my seam allowance and so it is crooked from the way it was printed, but it's straight the way that I want it so that my words are straight. Hope that makes sense. So that's what I've got. I've got this great big huge, and I think I might trim that down a little bit more. And then I've got a couple of other blocks here that I'm going to start working with. And my butterflies, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to cut these all apart or leave it as one big piece. The new trend with crumb quilts is actually to use all of these little bits. All of these little crumbs turn them into usable fabric and that is super, super fantastic. We are going to be able to use these, but not yet. You can also use lots of just leftover pieces if you have some pieces that are a little too small for anything else or something else that you can cut up. You can also use these, but not quite yet. The way that we wrote our pattern was to start out with kind of fat quarter size. And if you look at the pattern, you can see that's sort of what we talked about, is if you start with a piece of fabric that's roughly 18 inches by 22 inches, it doesn't have to be if you had this weird leftover piece that was only 14 inches long or a weird leftover piece that was 24 inches wide or, you know, 16. It doesn't really matter. It's the idea of taking these weird chunks of fabric that you have left over from your quilt, turning them up and tur cutting them up, and turning them into something else. So I am using fat quarters, which I think goes against the grain of crumb people making quilts, but that's what I'm gonna do, and that's what we do. So fat quarter-ish size, and of course a fat quarter is a half of a half a yard, so it's a quarter of a yard, 18 by 22, but again, whatever you have, if the piece you have is something that was cut kind of weird, something that was cut where you just cut a couple little chunks off. What are you going to do with something that's not quite a fat quarter? This is what you're going to do. So what we suggested was that you cut it up into strips and roughly what you're going to do is cut it into one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, and then repeat. If something happens and you cut that wrong and you accidentally cut a one inch and then another one inch, nobody is going to care about that because these are just sort of suggestions. So I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. Oh, maybe change a blade. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a one inch strip. Oh, I definitely need a new blade. So we cut a one inch. We're going to cut a one and a half. Then we're going to cut a two. A two and a half. A 
three. And I usually, I have to say that I tend to usually not go bigger. The pattern says to go up to a four inch. I tend to not go bigger than a three. After I've cut my three inch, and again, depending upon how much fabric I have left over, if I'm getting down near the end and all I can get out of that to be able to use up every crumb is to cut a two inch strip, then that's what I'll do. It doesn't really matter. But otherwise, I just kind of start over. So I'm gonna start over. Um, oh, I should have started over with my one inch, but I started over with a one and a half inch. Because it, it doesn't really matter. All you're doing is stripping this into, and then now, whatever is left here, because we called it a crumb cake because we were using every crumb of fabric. We didn't call it a crumb cake because we were using up crumbs, if that makes sense. So now, whatever size this is, which this happens to be two and a half, I'm just gonna cut that off. That's not a usable piece, at least not in my world. So that goes away. So I've cut up my fat quarter into one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, one and a half, two, two and a half. I have this little stack here. I'm going to do that with all of these fat quarters. Or again, if you have some weird random pieces, cut them up into some usable strips. You really don't need them to be longer than 18 inches. If they are, it's okay, but you'll end up cutting them in half anyway. So they don't have to be super long. I'll be right back. If you are a fairly skilled cutter, you can also go ahead and use your shape cut. You can see we're cutting a couple of ones, a couple of one and a halves, and then a couple of twos. And the other thing I'm just gonna point out, this is an expert cutter for you. She is actually cutting three of them at a time. Again, this is an opportunity to use every crumb rather than using up all of those crumbs. All right, so we have cut up our 12 fat quarters into little strips, and you can see if you're doing a more modern version of a crumb quilt, you could have all of these weird leftover strips, and you can throw them all into a pile. You wouldn't have to have cut up brand new fabric to do this if you didn't want to, but this is what we did. 12 fat quarters that all complement each other and all look great with the panel that we picked. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take you back to the pattern and show you that what we're going to do is we're going to create from our previous fat quarter we're going to create another one that's basically the same size so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these strips and it doesn't matter don't overthink this because nothing is going to touch what you think it's going to touch anyway they all touch something weird so just grab different pieces of the fabric that are different sizes put some skinny ones in there put some fatter ones in there doesn't make any difference. You're just going to find a bunch of different pieces, lay them all out in whatever order. Again, do not overthink it. It totally doesn't matter. Whatever is touching, even if you wanted to use one piece twice in the same strip, nobody is gonna care. You won't believe this at first, but you will see when the whole quilt is done that this step did not matter. It was not a great big thing that meant anything. All right, so we're gonna keep putting these together and I'm gonna get one other big one. Lay these all out. And after you've got to keeping in mind that we're gonna have seam allowances in here, I would probably go out to about 24 to 26 inches. I'm gonna sew this whole thing together. After I sew this whole thing together, I'm gonna to press it. The tip with sewing this together is I'm gonna sew first this way with my seam allowance and then I'm gonna sew the other way. And then I'm gonna sew this way and then I'm gonna sew the other way. The reason that you do that is if I'm just going to flip this over at my sewing machine and sew this way, 
flip this one over and sew this way and keep working, I can get this little thing that we affectionately refer to as a wow in the fabric because it's just the way that, that the feed dogs are pulling it. But if I go one way then the other way, it doesn't do that and it'll lay flat without some kind of a funny little curve in it. So once I've sewn all of these strips back together, I'm going to press it and then I'm going to have my next pieced fat quarter and I'm going to show you what to do. Okay, so it's all sewn together, and then the other thing too is I went ahead and pressed it. It's really not going to matter which direction your seams go, so you don't have to get crazy about all of that. And you can see that I lost probably about two and a half inches from the way that I laid it out, but it's still okay. You could keep going, you could add a couple more. Again, it really doesn't matter. The whole idea is just to use up every little shard and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut it again. So just like in the first one, when I cut my fat quarters, inch, inch and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, now I'm going to do the exact same thing, cutting it basically those same widths. So I've turned it. I'm going to, oops, I'm going to line this up. Looking at this, this helps me to make sure that my strips have stayed straight. And I'm going to clean up that edge. Normally I would just walk around, but, and now I'm going to go if you have a shape cut, you can use that inch. Inch and a half. Two and a half, three. You can go three and a half. I think I said before that the pattern says um, three and a half and four and inch and then you start over, but it doesn't really matter. I started over with inch and a half, two, and then sometimes as you're cutting, typically the rule of thumb when you're cutting strips is that about the time you get to the width of your ruler, your strip will start to get crooked. So do you see that? Where it's kind of having this little wow in it. So I'm going to show you another way. So typically then what would happen is I'm going to turn this around and once again straighten this up. So I'm just going to line up my ruler with my seams and see how much we're taking off. You, you don't, it's not that anybody did anything wrong, it's just what happens is some sort of weird strip physics. I'm going to go back to, I don't know where I left off, I'm just going to go ahead and do a two. Two and a half. And then now, I would do a three, but let's just three, see what I can have, what I can get. Again, just to use up every crumb, and it looks like it's actually another two and a half. That way I can use up everything. All right. So now I've got my little weird little strip pieces. Now comes the fun part. So all I've done really is I took perfectly good fabric, cut it into strips, sewed it back together, and made perfectly good fabric that is kind of fun and little bits. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically log cabin around my panel pieces. So I'm going to take this one and just decide how I want to sew that. And a log cabin just means, of course, that you're sewing the bottom on. I would cut that off, sew the next strip on, cut that off, sew the next strip on, cut that off, sew the next strip. And you just keep working your way around. And the idea is that we're going to keep doing that all the way around until we get up to a fairly large square. And I sort of suggested a 14 and a half by a 14 and a half. If you wanted to make them 18 inch squares, it doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and look up at this one again for a second. 
and it might be easier to see one that's done. So let's just look at this block for a second. So you can see this was the first strip that was sewn on, right? And then the next strip sewed on to here. The next strip, the next strip, next strip. So it just keeps coming around and the block, I don't know if you can tell, is right here. See this little four intersections here? Comes down to here and over to here. So here's a block. This block right here, because of the size of it, it only has one strip. So what we did is we sewed one strip on the bottom, one strip on the top, and then just sewed a bunch of rows to get it up to that, because it was already 14 and a half. Now we just had to make it 14 and a half wide. And then look at this one over here. This one has just two strips on this side and about five strips on this side. So you can kind of position them so that everything is not exactly in the center. The other thing is you might even just decide to mix it up. Maybe you have a panel that doesn't have nine little squares on it, so you can put something else in the center. It doesn't matter. It's not gonna make any difference. It just looks like lots of little bits. And again, that's why we called it a crumb cake because we took all of this fabric, used every little crumb, and it ends up looking kind of cool. I have one other one I'm gonna show you just for a second. This one is a very old one out of flannel. And this particular one was a really cool panel. This is probably 15 years old, so uh, there's no panel like it. But this particular panel had like a picture search on it. So I don't know if you can see that. It says what the sorts of things that you're supposed to find. And then the other part of the panel, I'm gonna drop it. You can see, did I drop it too soon? Yes, okay. So then you can see all of those other fun little things that are in that. So kind of a fun thing. You can also make a crumb cake with t-shirt blocks. You can make it with photo blocks. You can make it with pieced blocks that you're just over. Maybe you only made three of them, but you have some other kind of cool focus fabrics that would go with it. There are so many applications for this particular project that it really, this next little step is something that makes it kind of fun because you could really make it look even more interesting. Because one of the most fun things about a crumb cake quilt is that even experienced quilters look at it for a long time and say, well, where's the block? I don't understand what the block is. Because when you look at that, you wouldn't know where the block was because it's just a whole lot of stuff going on. Because there's really no method to it except sewing those strips on. All right, so let's go back to this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to piece a couple of these just to kind of show you what I mean. I'm gonna maybe gonna piece about maybe my first three or four of them and then come back and show you. But again, all you're gonna do, I sort of show you just a little bit about how you're gonna get that together and then you're just gonna make enough blocks until you've either used up every single crumb or you've got it the size that you want. So we'll be right back with some blocks. So this block is done. You can see what we did here. I'm just going to show you a couple more. You can see that it really doesn't matter what size that center block is. And then this one, you might want to change things up just a little bit and maybe add a little bit more color, put a border on something if you'd like to. And then as you're piecing all of that, if you find that you really just needed a half an inch to get it up big enough to trim. Just put a, a strip on it. It's not really going to matter because then when it's time to square everything up, the first thing that you want to do is press your blocks. Just make sure that everything is nice and flat. Your seams are going to go in odd directions and nobody's going to care about that because you're not going to do any nestling except for when you sew your blocks together. So what you're going to do, let me move this for a second so you can see, on your ruler, I like to mark my ruler so that I'm pretty consistent and I don't lose track of what I'm doing. This is a big 15 inch square up ruler. We're going to square our blocks to 14 and a half. If you're doing some other project and maybe you're making a crumb quilt border or you're making some crumb quilt blocks, you can obviously do them any size you want, totally doesn't matter. 
but what I'm suggesting for this pattern just to make it easy is that you make 14 and a half inch blocks. And also, if you've decided to do something smaller, it's not that you couldn't kind of turn something and make some wonky blocks if you want to really make it crazy. But for me, I'm just going to trim these down to 14 and a half. You can see that this is where my 14 and a half is. So when I'm squaring up a block, I just want to make sure that I'm trimming on all four sides so that I'm able to make this nice crisp block. So I'm going to trim here. And across the top. I don't know why I keep picking this one up. And then turn it around into my corner where I've marked my 14 and a half. Line that up on my 14 and a half and 14 and a half. I don't have to count because I already have marked it. And I think that these fun little occasional stripes are really fun. If you don't like that, if you feel like that's a little too much in your face, you don't have to do it that way. You could add something pieced. It would be perfectly okay. The other thing that you can do that's a little bit different is if you have something that's a larger block from a panel, you can see this is almost 14 and a half inches. You would have to trim off a little bit maybe here, maybe put just a little bit of something else around it and you can put one large piece in there. So after you've trimmed up all of your blocks, that's it. We're going to look back up at this one again. And just to show you, there really are no rules. The whole idea, cut it all up, sew it all back together, together making your own fabric using fat quarters that you've purchased or weird random leftovers doesn't make any difference but it's a great way to use up a strange panel that has some strange squares or a focus fabric if you look at this I'm just going to point out again like I did at the beginning of the video where the blocks are so this 14 and a half inch block is right here this one is right here this one has some kind of cool stripes in it. Just some cool fabric in there. Just put in something just to keep people guessing. So you can make as many blocks as you want. What we wrote in the pattern in terms of 12 fat quarters and a panel, you will have a bit of fabric left over, is three blocks across by four blocks down. You probably really have enough fabric to do 16 blocks. You can border it any way that you would like. We generally suggest you putting something that's fairly calm and stable as that first border to end what's going on because there's a lot going on in here. And also I want to point out, don't worry if things touch. It's going to happen and it totally doesn't matter. The other thing that I always warn people is that it looks pretty hideous before it looks good because there's a whole lot going on in here. But you'll add all of that texture of quilting and it's a really nice quilt, a really fun thing to look at because it's almost sparkly because there's so many little pieces. And, and again, it's really fun when your quilting friends look at it and say, wait a minute, where's the block? Because they won't be able to tell. All right, I hope you have uh, enjoyed our, our version of the crumb cake quilt. And um, I think that you're gonna make a lot of these. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.